morning to everyone present in this virtual platform. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes. I am Dhrubhajit Das, convener of Institution Innovation Council, SB Dora Gales. And at the outset, I welcome you all to the Impact Lecture Series. The IIC SB Dora Gales is organizing the Impact Lecture Series in collaboration with Ministry of Education, Innovation Cell, and AICT. We are very much thankful to them for giving us financial support to organize this impact lecture series in our college. We hope that today's impact lecture will help the participants to understand about the different facets of entrepreneurship and intellectual property right. Uh, now I request coordinator of this lecture program, Dr. Sagar Sharma, to elaborate the objectives and purpose of impact lecture. Thank you. Dr. Shagar Sharma. Thank you, sir. Um, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. A very warm welcome to everyone present in this Impact Lecture Series program. Um, as Sir has already told, uh, this Impact Lecture Series um, is organized in association with uh, Institution Innovation Council. Um, uh, which is which comes under basically Ministry of Education's Innovation Center. So today's Impact Lecture Series is organized by IIC SB Jawara College in association with Ministry of Education's Innovation Center and All India Council for Technical Education. Um, SB Jawara College, as we all know, located at the center of Guwahati City in the state of Assam. In fact, is one of the few colleges in Northeastern India to have this functioning institutions innovation council. And we are regularly conducting various uh, programs in accordance with the guidelines issued by MIC. Uh, today, um, which is the first session of this um, impact lecture series, in today's um, session, basically, we have two lectures. Um, the first lecture uh, will be delivered by Mr. Uh, Sir Mr. and Palimar, who is a serial entrepreneur. She has many laurels to her name and have co-founded several successful ventures. Uh, including Third Eye Education Private Limited, Kid Veda, to name a few. And today's um, second resource person is uh, Mr. Siddharth Devnath, uh, who is Scientist C at Patent Information Center of Assam Science, Technology, and Environmental Council. Uh, Mr. Devnath will be delivering a talk on emerging trends in IPR. Um, I am hopeful that today's session will be helpful for students and budding entrepreneurs as they will gain insight into steps to become successful entrepreneur and also get to know the hurdles associated with it. And at the same length, they will also understand the nitty and gritty of intellectual property rights. Finally, uh, I would like to thank and acknowledge the funding support provided by ministries of uh, Education Innovation Council and AICT for this impact lecture series. With these words, I would like to request Dr. Dhrubhajit Dasar to convene IAC to carry for lecture of the first session of Impact Lecture Series. So we are going to start the second lecture. Now I request our respected principal sir to deliver um, welcome address. Thank you, Dr. Das. Yes, sir. And sorry for keeping all the participants waiting. Actually, the program I was shown yesterday, uh, there was no role for me in the second session. That's why I took my time to reach the college. And this is the college. Uh, as it was a successful first session, I hope the second session will also be a successful. And because I see a number of participants is more than the second uh, in the second session as then in the first session. I, on behalf of the college and also the IIC, uh, welcome Dr. Siddharth Devnath. Mr. Siddharth Devnath uh, is a scientist C, uh, Patent Information Center, Aztec, Guwahati, Aztec Assam. And he will be in with emerging trends in IPR. And this is a topic uh, of vital importance uh, related to startup and innovation. And and also in the field of academics, what is IPR? We are often we are confronted with this term, what is patent, what is copyright, like that. 
So uh, I hope that participants, the students, and the teachers will be much benefited from this second session as well. On behalf of IIC, I welcome uh, Mr. Devnath. Uh, he's a well-known person in this field. And I just would like to inform him that we have been organizing this type of uh, program under IIC and also from the, also from the colleges uh, regarding a startup and innovation, uh, regarding what is patent, what is IPR, copyright, etc. And uh, this is part of the uh, impact lecture series of the IIC, which we have as per the mandate of Ministry of Education. And uh, we have formed the IIC Institution Innovation Council about two years back as per the guidelines given by AICT. And we are organizing many programs under IIC. And today's impact lecture is the second one, uh, second one of this session. We have organized many other, and we'll be organizing some more in the near, near future. And I hope that this will be this will generate much enthusiasm among the students and the participants. Thank you once again for giving me this opportunity. And I, on this uh, occasion, declare that the session is open. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I can see many participants from uh, outside of our college. Some of them may be the college professors. So I welcome you all to this program. Uh, now I request program coordinator Sagar Sharma to introduce our resource person. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, I'd like to again welcome all the participants uh, in the second lecture of today's session. So we will um, start the second um, lecture right away. Just um, let me first introduce our um, speaker um, to the audience. Um, so our resource person for the second lecture is Mr. Siddhartha Devnath. He is an engineer with a professional certificate course on IPR at National Institute, Institute of Intellectual Property Management, which is an institute in Nagpur. He is heading the Patent Information Center of STEC with a three-member team. Earlier, he also served as a project scientist in the Patent Information Center of um, STEC and in Arivata Science Center. He is a national level resource person on IPR for IITs, NITs, and many such institutions, as well as many universities and colleges. He is a member of Advisory Committee for Technology Transfer of Guwahati University a member of IPR cell of Guwahati University and Cotton University, and a member of Innovation Evolution Committee of MSME, Government of Assam. He is also a pattern expert of Institution Innovation Council of MHRE Government of India at Don Bosco College of Engineering and Technology and Golpara College. Um, he has many laurels to his name. Um, uh, he had facilitated ge uh, geographical indication, which is called GI registration for uh, Boka Saul and Muga Silk of Assam for the state of Assam and represented Assam for GI geographical indications at the BRICS Alliance Business Forum 2018. He has 11 years of IPR experience and has supported over 1,000 innovators, filed more than 50 patents and 50 other IPR such as uh, design, trademark, GI, copyright, and delivered more than 120 IPR lectures. So with this, um, I would like to welcome now our resource person to deliver his talk. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sharmaji, for this wonderful introduction. Uh, thank you, Principal Sir, for uh, this opportunity. Thank you, the organizers. Uh, I hope we had a successful morning session on entrepreneurship challenges and opportunities. Uh, this impact lecture series, I have been a part of uh, many colleges and I'm happy to be associated with uh, SVDRA College too. And uh, regarding the trends in IPR, I have prepared a brief slide. And also uh, since IPR is uh, very uh, unique, but it is a trending in fact uh, uh, factor in the technology and development of a country. And uh, all the participants here, those who are just maybe they are new to IPR. So I request you uh, to please ask me any questions, uh, anything that you need to clear, or there is a chat box I have found out. So you can also put your questions there. Uh, 
So my duty is uh, not only to give the lecture, but also to resolve any queries that you may have during my presentation. Uh, okay. Uh, can anyone confirm if uh, my screen is? Yes, yes, it is visible. It's visible. Okay, okay. May I continue? Yeah. Okay. So, emerging trends in uh, intellectual property rights. The first, uh, I want to just put a brief introduction about intellectual property. So intellectual property are the creations of the human mind. This is the basic definition as we call it. Anything that we create regarding the intelligence or what we call in India, buddhi in SMS or Hindi, uh, is a subject matter of an intellectual property because it comes from thinking thoughts, resolving power to make your life easier or to solve some problems uh, in everyday life. All those creations, just like uh, the property that we have are called as intellectual property. Intellectual property we can classify into several forms such as inventions, we have designs, marks, plant varieties, we have literary, artistic and musical works too. These intellectual property rights are just uh, uh, not recognized under the law or any other kind of a property until and unless they are registered. And once you register such an intellectual property, you can have legal ownership over that and also various rights that you may have. Intellectual property are knowledge assets too. Just like uh, when you are going to buy a new company, then you check what are the company, uh, human resource are there then what are the companies, uh, hardware is there, industry, factory. In addition to that, you also check what are the intellectual property of the companies are there. And these intellectual property, they have commercial value, just like all the other kinds of uh, properties they own. Interestingly, one thing is that a mere idea or thought is not an intellectual property. Today, uh, it's a, we had, uh, it's a rainy season, so someone might be thinking how to resolve some kind of a problem. Say you want to design a new kind of an umbrella where you can extend the umbrella to into two people or you can uh, just uh, um, like uh, fold the umbrella to for one people. So that is something that is a creation of a human mind. So it is still in your mind. So it's an idea, it's a thought. Now, when you change your whole idea into some kind of a, say, document, you make a drawing or you make a prototype, and then you, uh, or you, you can uh, uh, file uh, some kind of, a, say, images or CAD drawings or something like that. So at that stage, you have put your idea into some kind of a practical form. That is, it is feasible. Now, at this stage, it can be said that that invention of yours, the new kind of improved umbrella, that is a contender of an intellectual property. I said contender because it is not yet recognized as a property by any law. At this stage, if your design of this new umbrella, if you share it to your friends or you publish in, uh, say, media, such as uh, videos by contacting some uh, journalists or something like that, then everyone will come to know about it. And those people who has got the strength and the resources to manufacture it, they can start manufacturing from tomorrow. And then you will be nowhere because you have invested some kind of uh, you know, time, money, and your intelligence in creating that product, but other people are making it. At this stage, you cannot go to the court and tell them that invention is mine because it has become a public thing. So, when you've just conceived an invention, which is almost complete, what you need to do, you need to recognize it under intellectual property rights. And in order to get that rights, in this case, you have to register it under patent. Once you conceive an invention, first always register a patent and then you can publish it. That way, when you have already applied for a patent, other people, they cannot copy and claim this invention to be yours. This goes for other kinds of IP also. 
I'll just uh, elaborate once as we go to the next slide. So from the first slide, intellectual property creations of the mind, but they should be expressed into some practical form. And they are classified as several uh, types, as you can see. And those intellectual property should be registered under a definite act. Then only you can enjoy its legal ownership and various rights. And intellectual property are similar. They have commercial value, just like you have got in physical properties. Some examples, uh, inventions such as light bulb. It's a wonderful invention started from uh, Thomas Edison to CFLs, compact fluorescent bulbs, and then now LEDs. And in the future, there will be laser light bulbs. That is a trending that is going on because it consumes lesser electricity than LEDs and also pro produces more light output. Uh, another example is such a pen. A pen, you know, we uh, thought it was first uh, Lewis Waterman about uh, fountain pen. Then it came to uh, Biro. He invented the ballpoint pen. And now as we go on, then sketch pens are there. All those are inventions. And these inventions, they are registered under patent. Second kind of uh, IP is uh, designs, such as one of the most famous nowadays trending is the jewelry designs. When you go to buy jewelry from any shops, maybe in Guwahati or any other places, uh, you can find uh, in many designs, they have got a design registration. Just think a design is a creativity of uh, an artist. So you can see, uh, that has got an immense value because when you put the design into gold, into diamond, into a necklace, it has got a really good value. And that's why the original designer who owns the design should also have got some kind of a property ship. And that's why those jewelry can also be registered under designs. Then, uh, yes, couplet set. Uh, if you're going to a wedding, you might think you give a gift. And when you go to buy couplet set, such as... Uh, Laupala and other such uh, companies, then you can see a registered design is written in the packet. What does it mean? It means that the design is uh, owned by the company itself and other companies, rival companies, they cannot copy the similar or the same design. So they get a monopoly also in the market. Uh, bottles are also subject matter of designs. Next, we use several marks in trade. In commerce and uh, some marks are brand names, company names such as the name of your mobile phone, such as uh, Apple, HP, Dell. Uh, it could be food stuff such as uh, Britannia for food. Then it could be solar technology such as Softec. It's a very famous luminous for inverters. All those names, the design of the logos, they are used as marks in trade. Those are also subject matter of intellectual property. Because when you register such marks under intellectual property, you get the rights and the ownership of them. And so others cannot copy the similar or same mark. Similar marks are also used, which is GI, geographical indication. And those marks show the geographical area from where a particular good or product has originated, just like Mugasic as we have. We also have uh, the design of the computer microprocessor chips which can also be registered under IP and also varieties of various plants, uh, not only plants, trees, vines also, we can register under IP. And finally, for literary artistic musical works, such as book, play, song, videos, then uh, public performances. Uh, if you write some excerpts, newspaper article, magazines, even the magazines of a college, annual magazines, they can also be recorded are subject matter of IP and can be protected. Uh, I give two uh, images here. One is in the invention, which is uh, which can be protected from uh, the perspective of a patent. And you can see this invention was out uh, long before the COVID era and it was uh, marketed by Dettol in India. So it's a touch-based uh, liquid soap dispenser. Very interesting. It has uh, that sensor, you can see a little bit of uh, transparent area there. So put your hand and the uh, liquid dental soap will be uh, one or two drops will fall into it without touching. So here are some uh, 
the team of that all, or you can say some scientists, they have thought about this idea. So it was still an idea, but they made a prototype and they found that yes, it has got commercial value, it is marketable, people will buy it. So they registered a patent to it. And then after that, it was commercialized. So this Dettol, they own this technology and so on. They can produce this kind of uh, touch-based soap dispenser. No other company cannot produce it. And they have got a lot of money by commercializing it. So it's an example of wonderful example of an invention. And uh, next we have uh, another example I want to cite is the name of this uh, brand, which is uh, Everready. So here, interestingly, uh, it's a mark which is used in trade. There are other companies like Duracell is there, Nippo is there, Panasonic is there. But Everready, it's a very, very unique design of the logo, which is put in the battery. See, uh, Everready, the word itself, it says, it signifies something like, the battery is always ever ready. So it will give you energy as you use it. A sense, such a sense is put into the customer's mind. Then their unique logo, that is a black cat passing through the number nine. They say cats have nine lives. So life, so something related to the battery it will give you good life. All those things, think some person has designed that logo and that person deserves that this logo should be protected so that others cannot copy it. This is also a subject matter which, uh, of an intellectual property. Now, when we register these intellectual property into a right form of uh, protection, such as uh, patent, such as trademark, design, GIs, then the act which actually uh, creates the registration provides you with a various rights to enjoy. And these rights are vested to the owner of those IP. Without registration, they could be copied, used by anyone. So your name will be not there. After registration, you get an exclusive ownership of the IP. And you can do, uh, you can do whatever you want according to the rights that the IP will provide. You. That is the right to exploit, license, assign, surrender, and someone is copies. Even after you file a patent or a trademark, you can go to the court for an infringement action. So intellectual property rights, they protect your IP as long as you register it under the definite form of the act of a country. Here are the forms of the different intellectual property rights. So when we discussed about the different kind of IP, so if we have inventions, they will be protected in patent only. If we have design of an article, just like a jewelry or design of a new kind of a cloth, uh, a fashion designing, all those things, they come under design registration. We can have a mark in the commerce, such as the Everready mark, we can put register it under trademark and some marks such as the GI Muga silk that we can put under geographical indications. For microprocessor chip layout designs, there is integrated circuit layout design and for plant varieties, we have plant variety protection and farmer's rights. For literary, artistic, and musical works, we have got copyright. So these are the seven forms. On the left side column, you can see these are the seven forms of intellectual property rights that protects various IP that we have from as the creations of the mind. And all those uh, intellectual property rights, they have got a dedicated act which is passed by the Parliament of India. And these act protect the respective intellectual properties. We have got patent, patent act, design, design act, trademark, and so on. Some practical examples, that all example I gave. Now this uh, logo, you can see, it is the logo in the, of the Darjeeling tea and Darjeeling tea is a GI, that is a geographical, it is the first GI of the country and the first GI of Assam and Northeast is Muga silk of Assam. Now, when you go to buy this, uh, a packet of Darjeeling tea, if this logo is present, then it authenticates that the tea leaves will be from the Darjeeling area of West Bengal only. They should be 100% original and premium product. There should be no blending, no mixing. So this is a uh, kind of a symbol of a guarantee which geographical indication also provides. Uh, 
next see this uh, Microsoft Windows software. So softwares are subject matter of copyright. If you devise a new kind of an app also, mobile application that can be registered under copyright. Uh, look at this beautiful design of necklace set along with earrings, you can see. So the creativity of the artisan here, it can be protected under design registration. We have got a separate design act. And then this design registration, usually this is a new trend which is coming up. Uh, designers before they did not know about the value of uh, design registration and now they have even, I have also facilitated many. And after registration, they give license it to the big, big uh, like uh, shopkeepers, uh, you can see, or you can see the outlets here, like uh, Manik Chan, Senko, and all we have here. And then uh, when a jewelry gets sold, say it, uh, one is sold in 50,000 rupees, so that designer who would license it, he or she will get, say, a part of it, such as a 10% for every jewelry. So before it was just, they were just making the jewelry, but now they are also earning more because they have registered the jewelry in the form of an IPR, that is design. Trademark, uh, just like I've already told. Interesting thing about trademark is that trademarks create the brand in the market. So battery and also if you see any kind of a biscuit, the first thing comes to your mind, Britannia. Now we have here, Nizone is there. Uh, best farm is from uh, there. So all those things, the designing of the logo has got a very much effect on its sale and you know, also the customer. So here in case of trademarks, it's very important to design logo and also it should be very unique and effective. Then we have uh, plant variety protection and farmers rights. So various kinds of rice are also being made in the state. That is a new varieties. They have combined varieties of rices. Uh, maybe in case of a Joha, Chaul was also there. So the smell and the taste, it was combined with a flood resistant variety so that we get a new variety, which is flood resistant. And also it provides the aroma and qualities of Joha rice. Since it's a new variety where we will register it, we want an IPR in the new variety because someone might take some seeds, they will try to uh, cultivate in their own land, ultimately it will be in the market. But since you are the first and true inventor of this variety, you can take a protection in the form of a land variety protection and farmer's rights. And finally, we have got semiconductor indicator circuits layout design. And this image is uh, taken from the circuit layout design of a chip. So uh, I hope IPR is clear to the participants. If you have any uh, questions are there, you may just uh, put it in the chat box. IPR basically is the rights that we get it when we register an IP under a different form of a protection, such as patent is for uh, inventions only. Someone is doing a new design, it will come into the design. And uh, when we registered it, then we get the rights to it, how we can commercialize, how you can even prevent others from copying it. Okay. Uh, okay, patent. I'll just go one slide each for the patents and uh, other kind of IPRs. Patent is defined as a legal grant of exclusive rights, which is given for an invention by the government to the creator of a new and a useful invention invention in exchange of the disclosure of the invention. Here, the concept is a little different what I've just told. The first thing is when you invent a new kind of say a pen, a pen that writes in space without any kind of a gravitational effect or air pressure. Then what you'll first do, if you go to publish it in the newspaper, publish it in the media, if you offer someone to make it, then without any protection, that can be copied by others and they will also start making it. You will be nowhere. The first pro, uh, step here is to first register it under a patent. So patent, what you will do, it will provide you, uh, it will provide you a certificate. That certificate will tell that this invention, that is the pen that you have made, you are the absolute and sole owner of it for a period of only 20 years. So your registration is only for 20 years. And this 
invention that you have made it is novel it is inventive and it has got industrial applicability and then when this is certified for 20 years you can enjoy various rights of this pen that is you can set up your own factory by commercializing it you can license it to pen manufacturing companies say we have got uh, uh, link is there raymonds is there all companies are there which makes pen you can license it license means they will make it and whatever they will sell you will earn a profit from it and accordingly if someone tries to copy your patent that uh, invention and try to make this then you can go to the court and stop him about uh, further proceeding basic concept is of patent design now what does the government want the government wants that those you people they create new new inventions and then file patents once a patent is filed, that is protection given by the government. You do not need to worry about its theft or copying, but it has to come to the market so that people will buy it. Then the technology upliftment will be there. And also it will help helps a lot in the economy of the country. Patent is uh, implemented by the Patents Act 1970 and the recent amendment was 2005. When you're done with inventions, the patent, then you can go for design of articles. When we see the visual, some effect of an article, just as if you have got your own pen, you can have a look at your own pen. So every pen has got the same technology. There is a refill inside, as we call ballpoint pen. There is a ball, there is an ink, there is a cap. But your pen and my pen is looks different. Looks different means it's visually different color combinations are different, grip is different, shape and size are different. Here, the difference actually creates what? The customer attraction. Even though the technology of the writing of the pen is the same, but it is a design that makes you buy a specific kind of a pen. Some people, they always prefer to, you know, um, buy this kind of, from this brand only. Why? Because they like to write it good, it looks good, looks good on your pocket and such thing. here what i'm talking about is the visual aesthetic look so it's a visual ornamentation and characteristics of an article which regard to the shape configuration pattern ornamentation or composition lines and colors which is in 2d or 3d and only judged by the eye there are no technical terms in a design Technical terms, if you have in your work, it will go for patent because patent is purely technical. So if you are having this uh, pen, then the technology of the pen, how it writes, how the ball rotates, how it brings the ink, that will be a subject matter of then IPR, which is patent. You can register it, get protection over that. Additionally, when you're going to manufacture this technology, put it in the market, you want to put some aesthetic designs, color combination, some, uh, you know, grip, some uh, different color combinations and shapes also. And then you can have separate, separate design registration so that other companies cannot copy it. Thus, in the market, you can get an added advantage in this. And in case of a design, the registration is valid for 10 years. Initially, you can extend only more, than, uh, more about five years. After that, there is nothing right on you it becomes a public property then the main criteria of a design is newness and originality so the design that you have conceived a new design of pen it should be new to the existing one and it should be original and all the design the registration the process of uh, you know the protection that is covered under the designs act 2000 now have a look at this uh, Example, it's a Hawkins Futura pressure cooker, is it? So this pressure cooker has got a patent on a new kind of that whistle technology. It does not have that traditional whistle. It's actually, it's a pressure release valve, as we call it technically, but commonly we call it a whistle, right? So here, the whistle is very different. As you can see, there is nothing protruding a weight base. It's a balance based whistle. And because of this whistle, uh, technically, Cooking, uh, you know, uh, it takes less time. And that's why they have got a patent. Patent means technical. It's done. Now, when they went to commercialize it, Hawkins uh, 
so they have put it into the market then they think that they should have a specific design of the pressure cooker look it looks very different from the standard pressure cooker if you can see the walls they are a little bit tapering that is the above top is wider than the base but if you think about your pressure cooker at home then other companies such as prestige miss mary and all those things then it's a straight cylindrical structure so there is a little different also at the top lid you can see because of the patented uh, technology the design is also different also the color combination including the handle together with all of them you can say this is a something just a aesthetic looks of a article and thus you can see that this design has got being registered by the hawkins company design number 261309 now what is the effect of this design registration the effect is that when this design has been made no other company cannot copy or manufacture a pressure cooker that looks like this even though they have got a standard visual technology or other kind so visually if you go to the market to buy hawkins future then you will always know that yes this is the design i saw in the tv so i will buy it that also is an added benefit so design intellectual property right protects the aesthetic aspect of an article next we have got trademarks <laughs> trademarks are actually just kind of a words symbols combination of word or symbol logos which we put on some goods just to tell the customers that which company has manufactured it very simple so why do we put it because it is called one is the thing which is very important term that is called branding by branding you create your presence in the market you get a good market share and also you attract customers that is the way and the why we create trademarks however where is the ip that is where is the intellectual property where is the creation of the human mind in a trademark answer it is just in the design of the trademark how you design the logo how you color the logo what is the word that you choose those are the aspects of a trademark and we say that the criteria of a trademark is called distinctiveness distinctiveness means one trademark should be significantly distinguishable from other trademarks there cannot be two similar looking trademarks at any point of time so distinctiveness is the main criteria when you register your mark uh, uh in the among the participants if someone is going to have your own company your startup your firm then the first thing i always recommend please make a trademark make a trademark you to manufacture a trademark which is unique register it and then only enter the market trademark once it is registered you get registration for 10 years and after that it is you can renew it for another period of 10 years and so on and trademark is covered by the trademarks act 1999 geographical indications these are also similar to trademarks but these marks when they are put on goods instead of indicating the company they indicate from which place that good actually has come from very interesting because in addition to that not only the place it also signifies some kind of a quality reputation some characteristic some speciality or exoticness of the product too for example if you think that uh, i want to buy uh, say a champagne right champagne is a geographical indication and it gi is registered in india and it shows the geographical area is the champagne area of france in europe if anyone has gone there or if you want to go in the future please visit the champagne area in france and the grapes that are produced there from that grapes when you make the champagne that is the pure and authentic champagne so when you go to buy the champagne the word champagne itself word right it's a mark interestingly it is a geographical indication so you can buy without any uh, doubt that it will be a very pure and uh, origin product right from France. Our registration for a GI is for ten years, just like trademark, and you can renew on for another uh, period of ten years. 
and the criteria is a little bit different. In trademark, it was distinctive net. That is, two marks can be uh, cannot be the similar, and they should be really distinct from each other. In GI, the criteria is the reputation of the product, the historical proof of origin. That is, this goods they originated from there. It should have a history, specifications, map, and also how many people are engaged in the business, etc. And GIs are governed by the GI Act 1999. So here on the right, you can see the example of this logo, which is a GI logo of Muga Silk of Assam. Now, Muga Silk, what is the main problem that we get? We are always uh, in a doubt whether it's a pure Muga or not, because Muga is passed off with uh, tossed silk, which is colored like Muga. And then you can, uh, there are many counterfeits in the market too. But since Muga Silk of Assam has been registered as a GI, so when you go to buy it in the market, if you see this logo or the person who is buying it, he has a certificate bearing this logo, then certificate, GI certificate bearing this logo, then you can be 100% sure that he has he is selling authentic Muga products only. He cannot sell any counterfeit because this will be contrary to the GI Act. So from the next time, if anyone wants to buy Muga clothes, uh, there are many, almost we have 300 people all over Assam. In Guwahati also, uh, many peer shops are there. You can go there and buy, plus please ask them whether you are GI registered or not. Someone will tell if yes, I am, then you ask for the certificate because it is you have the right to know whether they are uh, GI registered or not. If you find it, if you find this logo, there is a certificate from GI registry, then you can buy the Muga silk products from there and they will be 100% pure and authentic. Next, we have semiconductor IC layouts design. So when these microprocessor chips are designed by a company in the industry, they are designed uh, in a software and that software file is transferred to a robotized manufacturing plant. That manufacturing plant actually makes this microprocessor chips. So here, how this designing is done, how these wires will be, they're not wires, there's some uh, transmission lines inside the chip at nano level, almost nowadays it is uh, five nanometers scale. And how you will arrange those, it affects the performance of a microprocessor chip. So there is some human creativity involved. Creativity involved means, yes, you can register in, into some kind of an IPR. Special IPR is this one that is semiconductor IC layouts design. Here we have the criteria of originality, distinctive, and distinguishable. Originality and distinctive, I think you can know what it is, but distinguishable means two layout designs, they should be significantly distinguishable from each other. If they are similar, if you are using parallel three lines here, parallel three lines here, that cannot be registered. Here registration is only for 10 years, you cannot extend it. After 10 years, it becomes a public property. And here the act that we have is the Semiconductor Integrated Circuits Layout Design Act 2000. So this matter is not actually in individual group or institution level. This is actually in big companies uh, like uh, Samsung manufacturers, uh, Apple, then we have got uh, uh, Intel. Those chip manufacturing companies, they only uh, register this semiconductor IC layouts design. Next, we have plan by the protection and farmer's rights. If you have a new variety or a variety of uh, rice, say, farmer has been preserving preserve for years, uh, if you uh, derive new varieties, then those, just like inventions, you can register for patent. For plan varieties, you can register for plan by the protection and farmer's rights. What will happen when you register? In patents, when you register invention, you can you have the exclusive right to use it to sell it to manufacture it and if someone copies you can go to the court and stop it similarly here also if when you register a variety you have the right to save to use that is in your own field you can use you can exchange it and also you are you have you can sell the seeds to some other party and here also if someone uh, uses your seeds to cultivate his or her own farm, then you can go to the court and also stop it. So this is a very, very strong 
uh, act that we have, but it is not very implemented well. People are not aware of it. And in a country like India, we have an agricultural economy is very high. This is one of the game changer. And nowadays, many varieties are coming up. Interestingly, the office of this plant variety protection is at Khanapara in Guwahati only, in Assam Agricultural University campus. If someone is interested to inter register a variety, you can go there and uh, seek help. Registration of plant variety protection of farmers' rights is valid for 18 years in trees and vines and 15 years for other kind of plants. And here the criteria is the dust criteria that is distinctiveness, uniform stability, along with novel. And the act is the Protection of Plant Varieties and Farmers' Rights Act 2001. Uh, finally, I come to the last IPR, which is copyright. And copyright is given to literary, artistic, musical works and public performances videos, photographs, sculptures, architectural works, all those things, they fall under copyright. And copyright also covers broadcasting of the organizations such as nowadays OTT is there, isn't it? Satellite broadcasting, those are uh, covered under copyright. Uh, when you create something, a uh, copyrightable work, such as uh, say a book, then you make a song, then uh, even question papers are also subject matter of copyright, then once it is uh, created, it automatically gets a copyright. It is not mandatory to register a copyright. But if you register it, you get a certification from the government, which actually helps to establish your ownership. So it is always recommended if you're writing new books, even your uh, PhD thesis or research thesis is a subject matter of copyright. Interestingly, copyright has got the largest uh, validity. And this is for literary, artistic, and musical. It is 60 years after the death of the author. After the death of the author also, for 60 years, the copyright remains intact. And uh, other cases such as the broadcasting, it's for 20 years. If you have movies, uh, sound, songs, those go for 60 years from the date of next publication. The criteria for copyright is originality. It has to be original and not copied. And the act is also the oldest act that we got, and that is the Copyright Act 1957. So this was all about the intellectual property rights, how you can uh, protect your various creations, your various work, your various logos uh, under the different parts of the act which provides protection as IPRs. So patents, we have got designs, trademarks, copyright, semiconductor, IC layouts, and plan varied protection, and also geographical indications. Now, the current issues, what is going on in IPR issues? So this is actually the uh, main topic. So after the introduction, I'll go into this. The first thing is very, very strong and all over the what is going on is relating to the patent of the drugs, chemicals, and pharmaceuticals. Inventions, majority of the inventions are only related to pharmaceuticals. That is the medicines. You see, if every other people you can see, they are taking some kind of medicine, isn't it? Some kind of medicine. If you go to the hospital, it is medicine and they are really having costly medicines, also generic medicines. Uh, many of your parents and many of the people, they are taking daily, uh, you know, uh, hypertension medicine, that is pressure tablets, what we call it. Many are checking their glucose levels. They are taking medicines. All those are inventions and all those are patented inventions. So if you buy uh, a strip of uh, this glucometer, you're paying say 200 rupees for the strip, 10 rupees goes to the inventor of the strip because that inventor has patented that strip. It's a really, really wonderful invention. Now, the market is actually captured by the pharmaceutical, chemical, and drug industry, the whole patented market. And uh, the economy of the country is maximum influence, in case of IPR, the maximum influence by only 
is pharmaceutical. But here, there are some problems. One of the major problems before, it was that uh, before the 2000 amendment of the patent act, we were not able to register or we were not able to register a patent regarding the uh, product of a pharmaceutical. That is, if you manufacture, uh, say, a medicine, then how the medicine is manufactured, the method is patentable before 2005, but the medicine itself, the composition was not. After 2005 amendment, now medicines are also patentable. As a result, the medicine prices have gone up. A new medicine, when it comes, it has got a huge price because you cannot say that it has to be decreased because the company has invested crores of rupees in making a medicine. And uh, it is said that in case of pharmaceutical industry, if you have 10,000 samples, 10 will only uh, be going to actual uh, human testing and only one will be accepted. And that's why it's a very, very big industry. Here, one of the issue is that evergreening and incremental invention. Now, remember, I shared that patent is granted for 20 years. So medicine, do you think that after 10 to 20 years, the medicine will be over? No. You know that uh, paracetamol tablet, we are still taking it, right? Even it has expired a long time ago. Now, what the pharmaceutical companies do, they try to evergreen the patent. That is, they will try to change or improve a little bit on the composition, on the method, and then they will try to get another patent for it because after 20 years, they will not have any protection. And so other pharmaceutical companies will start to make it and then the price will come down. They do not want to have it. They want to have kind of a monopoly. So they try to evergreen, evergreen the patent. This is called evergreen. And India is one of the strongest opposer of evergreen patents. Uh, there was a drug which is called Glyvec uh, by Novartis. So it was uh, already patented 25, almost like 22 years before it expired. Before expiry, Novartis company, they filed another formulation of the similar drug, which is a little bit of effi uh, more efficient than the previous, but the composition was very, very similar. And also the method. But here, this case of the patent, it was not granted. Patent was not granted. So then they go, went to the high court, then went to the Supreme Court. And then in the Supreme Court, it was rejected saying that it is not uh, under section D of the patent. It is not uh, under the efficacy rules that it cannot be granted a patent. Thus, India has prevented evergreening of the Glyvec. And that is a, actually a blood cancer uh, drug, which is very, very important. And another aspect is the incremental inventions. When you make, say, you construct a whole uh, pen, okay, then what you do, you first uh, patent the nib of the pen, then you patent the refill body, okay, and then what we do next, you try to improve a little bit about the refill, make it shorter or longer or more efficient, more capacity. Then you try to improve the ball of the ballpoint pen. So these are incremental inventions, or little bit step step you try to, but actually in one go only you could have uh, released the whole invention. So this is how they some people try to you know get more uh, patents for the same only one invention, and this is also an issue because it creates overload on the patent system, and examiners about to granting of the patent it, it uh, creates a problem. So that's why. This is an issue, but in India is very strict about this issue. Uh, computer and software related inventions. So I told some time ago that uh, that in copyright you can register computer programs. Computer programs cannot be registered in patent in India. It is possible in the US and other countries, but in India it is not. Now, if you say how we take a computer program. Those are conversing computer. You, you might be knowing it's just the lines of code, isn't it? You write the codes, the compiler will compile it, and then it will be run, and then the action will be performed. Now, these codes are creations of the human mind. So definitely, they are an IP. So definitely, you should register it, say, in copyright. Once you register in copyright, 
the copyright takes it as a software work and so it will grant, give you grant for 60 years fine but is it that uh, strong and the st uh, strength is there so that you cannot copy it because if you have a patent patent means what it's a new invention an invention class is superior to that of a text more money is involved there and as a result the protection is not very proper so there is always this confusion such as computer and software, whether it, you can put it under copyright or patent. In India, currently only in under copyright. Another thing is that if you are designing some embedded systems, then you can put some computer uh, lines of code, just like writing like algorithms, you can put under patent. That is also allowed to a great extent in India, but not uh, too much that's in the US. If you check US patents, you can find that computer programs uh, like they are almost like getting a lot of patents. So this is a, this is an issue. So even though it is like that, we believe that uh, India granting copyright has got some benefits, such as the period of registration is higher, sixty years compared to patent, and it's a lines of code. You can actually uh, verify one to one whether these are copied or not. But there are other problems such as. You can write a different code to achieve the same um, uh, uh, effect and you can improve the codes by reducing the codes this depends on the new new uh, work of the programmers so in that way the copyright may be how many copyrights you will file but in case of patent it is stronger because it will prevent any others from using the whole method how the uh, program is written so that is something is also an issue here next compulsory licensing uh, i'll just explain in brief say when you get a register of a when of a patent so medicine you got a patent there's a composition of some chemical composition and also how the uh, medicine is manufactured step by step like taking this chemical mixing it heating it then boiling and something like that, ultimately you get the medicine so you got a patent patent means then the medicine as such the pill as such and also the method cannot be used by anyone without your permission. You are the excessive owner. Now, say for, for some reason, there is an, uh, such as uh, very much uh, in need of such kind of a, a medicine. People are getting sick, they want this medicine. But since you are the exclusive owner and your ownership is provided by the Patent Act itself, you have the right not to commercialize also, isn't it? There is nothing you have the right to commercialize, but you cannot commercialize and no one can force you. What will happen is that in such a case, say the people are dying, they are not getting your medicine, or you can do one thing, you are manufacturing it and selling it at a very, very high cost. Say one medicine is costing uh, like one lakh rupees, and then people are dying because they cannot afford it. So in that case, a special provision is there in section 84 of the Patents Act. It is called as compulsory licensing. So what compulsory licensing does is that in such a case that I give you the example when there is a need of an invention, then the government can intervene and forcefully give a license to some other company who can start manufacturing that medicine at a lower cost or affordable cost. This is known as compulsory licensing. And compulsory licensing also has got two sides. One is that some people say, uh, those pharmaceutical industry, they will argue why you're giving compulsory because we have invented, uh, we have invested say $1 billion and you are trying to sell it in 10 rupees. They are also true in their way. But on the other hand, people are dying. So what will government do? They will issue a compulsory license or not? Yes, because they have to save the people. That is also right. So this is also a fight and an issue that is also going on, has been going on for a long time. Uh, I've given an example on the right side, you can see two uh, uh, medicines. And the first one at the top is it's Nexavar. Nexavar is a medicine which is used for curing uh, liver and kidney cancer. It's a very famous medicine. It is from the company Bayer. You can see Bayer logo is there, which is also a trademark. Bayer is a logo is trademark. So that is Bayer. Now, uh, what happened before 2012, this medicine was also sold in India and Nexavar 
uh, was a patented medicine. Bayer has got a patent to it in India. So only Bayer can manufacture the Nexava. Okay. But what we, they were doing is that they were selling it is a very high cost. That is almost like, uh, I think, 2.6 to 2.8 lakhs for one month dose. So people who have got, uh, you know, uh, liver and kidney cancer, they could not buy it. Because, you know, one month only about 2.8 lakhs will go for this uh, medicine. Now, uh, our own Indian company, which is Netco Pharma, they had approached uh, for licensing of this next hour that they will try to license it and they will produce it at a lower cost. But they denied it. Then they went further and they went to court and say that, uh, look, uh, we have an option at section 84 regarding compulsory license. We want to take compulsory license. But then Bayer also fought because they do not want to get the profit out of it. Then uh, Netco Pharma ultimately uh, the court rule that uh, in this and thus we can see that I think it was in March 2012, right? March 2012. So India got its first compulsory license, first and the only one till now, and net it was granted to this Netco Pharma. Now Netco Pharma, why? What? What? What compulsory license was granted? This they can manufacture a generic version of this Nexo. And so since generic version is made. So it will be lower cost. And interestingly, from 2.8 lakh for one month's dose, uh, Netco Pharma tablet, you can see at the bottom of the next hour, that tablet cost only 9,000 rupees, 2.8 lakhs to 9,000 rupees. So this is one of the success of the composite licensing, one and only success in India. But uh, still uh, some people are not happy. And this is also going on with very many medicines. Many people are trying, but interestingly, in section 84, you have to uh, abide by some of the, the, the procedures and also the how to ask for a compulsory license. So everything you cannot get a compulsory license. And now uh, regarding friend and SFA, friend means fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory. So here, what said a patent, uh, it protects a technology, which is, uh, you know, which is, if it's a very standard essential thing for a patent, then it is called a standard essential patent. Uh, for example, if you see that uh, mobile phones, they have got uh, antennas inside. So these antenna, they put a radiation. Okay? So if there is a patented technology inside, which uh, diminishes the radiation, to some extent, so that it is acceptable to be marketed in India, then, you know, interestingly, uh, that is called a standard essential patent. And because of that patent only, you can uh, commercialize that mobile phone in India. Okay. Uh, so what happens is that uh, it has to comply with that standard, such, such as the ISO is there, the C standard is there. And uh, because of that only, uh, this fair reason and non-discriminatory uh, 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 and the uh, SCPs are granted. Now, uh, interestingly, uh, when such an SCP or essential patent is actually uh, taken by some company from others, such as uh, your manufacturing in China and bringing to India, then those uh, parties who own the patent to that technology they can object it and they can object and say that hey, this is a standard essential patent and then uh, why you are uh, importing it in India. So it cannot be imported without getting a license. So in that case, there is a fight again. It is not uh, really clear about what uh, how fair you can do. And in case of a friend is that there should be a balance between the uh, licensor and the licensee. Say, uh, just like this one, uh, you invent a new medicine and that medicine you want to give it to the market. Then the market, the companies are there, they will manufacture it. Now, if you ask that this medicine, I will take 10 lakh rupees uh, royalty. So then they will have to sell it in 25 lakhs. So this is what is called as friend. So it should be fair and reasonable how much you should license. It is not that unlimited. There should be a value of a particular value of a patent and only that patent should be licensed. Now, uh, there is a blood pressure, uh, what is called it, aspirin. Now, I think you know, eco-spirin. 
there is a medicine right if someone is taking it's not blood pressure i think blood thinning yeah so that medicine it's a very very i think low cost you can see but before it has got a, a very very high cost now since it has been licensed to manufacture because of this friend you no know, they cannot increase the price to a very very high same with uh, that uh, i think telma is the another brand name for a hypertension uh, drug that is also it is also regulated because of this friend so one cannot ask that i want this much of money so there has to be some regulation so that it stands into a good balance uh so standard essential pay, uh i can share one thing that that scp when did it happen uh in 2000 i think 11 uh, or 10 uh what happened uh an indian company which is called i think kings king tech king tech or kings tech kings tech so they were importing handsets and these handsets they were infringing several of the standard essential patents in the amr code remember at one time we had got mobile phone that recorded only in amr mp3 was not there so that without taking any permission they are importing handset with a built in this amr code so what happened this india in ericsson they objected it and this is how the scp system works okay now some of the initiatives by the indian ip office so uh the trend of the ipr in india has changed a lot nowadays you can file patents and trademarks completely in e filing mode no paper is required and also those who are filing online they will get a 10% rebate on the online fees other ipr's also you can file online but till now your hard copy is also required and soon it will be uh, 100% online filing all the processing of the patents and trademarks are electronic so is the gis and also the copyrights means everything is scanned if you are sending uh, if you are filing online that is a digital document but if you are uh, uh, filing a patent by hard copy that is scanned by the patent office and put as you know a uh, document in the file so everything is electronic processing and if you have got a patent grant earlier a uh, certificate used to come through post and it reaches you in about 10 to 20 days nowadays everything is e certificate with a qr code and so that certificate will be directly uh, uh, you know uh, come to the owner of the registered iprs also the status of your filed patent and other iprs you can check online also nowadays there is a good communication uh, between the office to you especially via email when you file a patent then email will come then it is examination is there again email will come there is a hearing so it's a good uh, you know interaction is increased earlier it was not there it came by post and you have to actually approach the patent office and also the our own india's own the patent database there is a search system which is called inpass indian patent advanced search system this is also be improved i remember uh, last almost like before 9 or 10 years i used to search patent it was very difficult to find you know uh, uh, how to search in a proper way but now they have improved it their logic is also improved you can get a good search on the different kinds of patents the data database of patents only indian patents okay and now pendency has been reduced well it is true we have to accept that it takes a lot of time to register patents in india i for uh, filed my first patent in 2012 and it was granted last year so you can see it's a big pendency but now this pendency is reduced because uh, i filed a patent in 2016 i got it in 18 also and uh, frs uh, they are giving is almost like 8 months and interestingly uh, last 2 years 2 years back i filed a copyright uh, for my inventor it got granted in 2 months this was a record time and last year one trademark i filed which was granted uh, in 8 months time so nowadays it's a very very reduced pendency that all times of taking about 8 to 9 years is slowly diminishing so this is a very good uh, uh, they have also recruited many many people examiners and uh, make their offices online digital nowadays uh, all the patent offices they have a unified system if you file in indian uh, patent office in kolkata you don't know who will examine 
poll karna examiner may not examine your patent application it may be done by someone at mumbai or in chennai also uh, next is the national ipr policy uh, in march uh, in may sorry uh, in 2016 the union cabinet they put out this national ipr policy it has got seven different uh, sorts into which we can uh, have ipr take a new leap in india the first one about generation of awareness and these uh, impact lectures are also a part of that not only this if you want to have ipr workshops especially in institutions you can ask for them from the dpiit that is department for promotion of industry and internal trade the department that looks after the patent office you can also ask uh, even our uh, office also uh, if we have till now there is not but if we have we can also share your funds for ipr awareness next generation of ips so regarding when we are generating iprs we need first creators now these creators should be nurtured so that uh, if you uh, this results from various such as competitions if you organize uh, the innovation uh, competition innovation hubs you have there when a student they comes up with a new idea then that is where how the new idea will boost you have to feed them with the latest technology one of the main problem is uh, now it is slowly diminishing i found almost like earlier that the people were not knowing what is going on outside world yes that is true because they were not using properly the internet to see what is there going on someone is very uh, uh, into the agricultural device but they just come to me and tell that i want to patent it but when i just type it in the google now i can get i can online buy it so this is not how we generate ip once people know about what is going on in the outside world then we can have uh, a great number of generation ips then legal and legislative framework so this relates to mainly amendments of the different act of uh, the iprs and also the rules uh the rules that we have we have we are uh, amending the rules and interestingly i can share you one thing uh the recent amendment of the various ipr rules especially patents they have included educational institutions in the natural person category for fees so if a natural person is a single person a group of person they apply for a patent they have to pay 1600 rupees online earlier the education institution they had to pay 4000 rupees so that is uh, something that they could not manage but now education institutions can also pay 1600 rupees and file a patent so in this way the legislative framework has also been modified then ipr administration and management the way how ip offices work now is very different less file and everything is electronic i have my friends there at uh, kolkata patent office so they are working they say that everything they just need a computer no document no signature just like e governance has come everything happens in the computer and during lockdown time somewhere got special permission to even work from home because they just need to log into the the network of the ip office so this is how it has improved a lot next we had the commercialization of ipr commercialization has become easy one of is is the the startup system that has been introduced and from the startup you are getting a lot of workshops regarding the pitching then there are many schemes of msme uh, where you can apply and also the incubation centers next we have enforcement and adjudication uh, several cases of patent infringement have come up recently there was a trademark infringement about the uh, Uh, uh about a shop in delhi so that was also ruled in favor those things, you may not find it in our regular news but in online there is ip news portals you can find it. and also human capital development uh the trend in ipr in india has increased a lot especially for patents i'm sharing this one for special it is very interesting if you see uh almost like 11 12 years before there was always what we had uh foreign filings were more than our domestic filing it means that non indian people that is foreigners they were filing their patent in india just like the bear right bear company is a foreign company they were filing patent in india getting their product registered in india 
versus domestic patent filing means I am an Indian company, just like Netco Pharma. I have developed a drug here and I am filing my patent in India. So in a country, if the domestic filing has is more, that means that country is more innovative, more creative, has got more IPR. And if foreign filings are more, that means that is less IPR and foreign people are using that uh, uh, country's resources in the way of IPR. So in almost uh, last 11 or 12 years, we can see recently then in the report of January, March, 2022, 54% were the domestic patent filing. This was very interesting. Uh, I think I put a data, yes, 19,796 patent applications were filed. And out of this 10,706 were Indian applicants, whereas 9,090 were non-Indian applicants. So we can see that India, in India, the IPR is increasing at a very good uh, rate. And also the filing of the patent has increased from the seven years, last seven years, 50% increase. There is a graph called chart also that is from the PIB. And then you can see how the filing has increased. First it was in financial year 15, no, 42, and now in 21, 66,000. It's, it's a lot uh, of increase. And also granting of the patents has also been increased. So now it is almost, uh, uh, you can see 30,474 uh, numbers of uh, patents were granted. So this is a very, uh, a uh, very good trend in India that more and more patents are being filed and also granted. It means more and more inventions are coming up in India. And interestingly, examination time, just I shared before, no, one of my patents from 2012 got granted last year. Now it has reduced to almost like uh, seven to two months, they say. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, in five to 20 months. Before it was like seven to, but more than that also nowadays. Uh, but I, I think we have got the practically since I've been filing a lot uh, nowadays in uh, you can get a patent grant properly in almost two to three years. But I tell you one thing that uh, a patent is granted from the date of application only. The effectiveness is from the date of application, not from the date of the grant. So when you have filed a patent, once you get the application number, you can start commercializing it. No need to wait for the grant of the patent. Same with other kinds of IPRs. And finally, I come to the conclusion and I'll share some of the granted patents last year, this financial year, that is uh, Mr. Manoj Kumar Das. He has got two patent grants. One is for the bamboo reinforcement concreting, which is for making the columns and beams of civil construction, that is houses using bamboo. And the second patent is for concreting over bamboo spits, which is making the roof slab of such houses. Now, if he is open for commercialization of these two patents, and also he had made commercialized, have constructed several uh, houses also, and by using this, these two patents, you can construct your house not only single story, multiple story houses you can construct with forty percent less cost. This is very very interesting. Now, many people have thought that if you put bamboo, will it break? No, this has been tested. And its strength is equivalent, durability is equivalent to that of a traditional RCC building. So if anyone interested, you may contact them to get the patent license. Also, we got a patent grant of a new kind of uh, energy generating device. And here, by using the buoyancy of uh, uh, the water, that energy we are using to create a reciprocating motion just like we have got in engines, in piston engine, and that is used to actually generate electricity. Now, there are patentee and the inventors, they say that if this is implemented well, then we will not be able to, we don't need to use large dams for electricity generation, only by using it in small drains, uh, even uh, small rivers, we can generate electricity. And the fifth patent we got it, this was uh, an invention by uh, Ranjit Shetia from Golaghat and name is Naga Kingchuli Jai. Naga Kingchuli, that is the, what we have, uh, that Bhuj Jodokya. So drying is very dangerous because it is very pungent. So if there is a little bit leak, not only you, but whole area will get affected. It has to be careful. So here, but problem is that when you're drying chilies, 
you need to attend it because you need to change the position of the chili so that both sides are uh, actually dried properly. So what he did, he invented on the right side, you can see there is a small thing device. Yeah, there is a fan, there is a handle and the fan, there's a draft fan that actually circulates the hot air inside this uh, dryer. And that draft fan remains inside the dryer, but that handle remains outside. Also, from the outside, fresh air goes and it first cools the motor of the fan and then only it enters the uh, dryer. So inside the dryer, the temperature is almost like uh, 60 to 70 degrees. And in 60 to 70 degrees, increasing temperature, if you put a fan motor, then it burns out. So he had solved two problems. One problem, he had prevented the burning of the motor and second this draft fan by using the handle number 19 it is given you can change the direction of the airflow so that one time the heated air flows from top of the chilies and the second time it flows from below the chili so you can dry the bhujjologia without even touching it in the whole process so he had already commercialized he is selling almost like uh, capacity standard about 1.8 lakhs or something like that he's selling it. And the fourth patent that we got, this was uh, from Kamar the Bormudoy in Gopur and he had invented a sediment return ground-based multi-stage water filter. So he had uh, solved a very typical problem of water filter is that when the water filters are clean, then the precipitate, we throw it in the drain. That precipitate goes and affects the fertility of the soil nearby. There is some clogging also and all such things are there. Interestingly, what he did, he created a bore at the bottom of his filter where when you do a backwash, all the precipitates, all the sediment, they go down to the earth, but not so much down, just below the fertile layer and above the water table and there it will be deposited. So he has prevented uh, contamination nearby and he has also done many, even in nursing homes, he has constructed it. He got orders from nursing homes also because water filtration is very much important there. And the area nearby his water filter is very clean. And also he has shown, uh, you know, cultivated plants and beautiful, it's a beautification uh, area instead of the dam and you know that area that we have typically in water filter system. This is also a great invention. If someone is interested, you may contact him. And if you need it in your premises, he can. He has a team and he can come and construct it for you. So thank you everyone for listening. This is all about uh, my lecture in emerging trends in IPR. Uh, let me see if I have any questions that I can take. Stop sharing. Yeah, stop sharing. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Doctor Mr. Devnath, yeah, for, yes. your, uh, for your very informative presentation. Uh, your presentation is very interesting. Rather, uh, I have attended many uh, lectures uh, on IPR, but your presentation is something different. I found it, <laughs> especially you, you. you have you have uh, you have mentioned the current issues in IPR as well as uh, the recent trends in patent technology. Yes. Uh, so now the um, yeah. it's open for discussion. Participants can ask any question. Yeah. Yes, any question if you have, uh, you can ask, or if you're not willing to ask now, you may contact sir and they can uh, get back to me also. For yes, I think have... how oh, we have to apply. One question from Orunima Gogoi for copyright, how we can apply? Uh, copyright application, you need two copies of your work, first of all. If you're writing a book, then make two copies. If you are, have men, uh, made a computer software, make two copies. And then you can go to copyright.gov.in. I think I can try. There you can go. And then you can create an account and file your copyright application, all your name, title, and everything there. Also pay the fees online. 
after that those two copies i told you no those two copies uh, an acknowledgement slip will come out along with that acknowledgement slip those two copies you have to send it by speed post to corporate office new delhi and then what they will do they will examine the whole content and if they found it right then they will return one of the copies to you signed and sealed by them along with the copyright certificate so this is the whole process it's a very simple way you can file a copyright application yeah mr devnath yes sir uh, is it not enough uh, when the book publisher suppose he simply gives the copyright symbol then this the, the copyright of this book rests with uh, such person is it not enough or should we apply for the copyright of the book or whatever to a to the office like that as you have mentioned just yes sir uh, as per copyright act uh, it is not mandatory to file a copyright once a copyright work is created that is today if a book is completed that means at that moment it is already copyrighted but uh, when you see if you put a symbol it's like a self declaration just like the self attestation that we do now tomorrow if something happens a case is there where there is a fight between the authors if you go to the court then you have got one additional work to prove in the court that is this i have the copyright in this book there is an additional task so in order to be easy on that proving the ownership you should actually file the copyright so the at least in the court you can produce the copyright certificate and then tell me just this, this certifies the ownership otherwise uh, the publisher uh, writes that this uh, copyright of this book uh, lies with the author that is enough yes sir uh, they, they if can... there is no legal if there is no legal hassle suppose yes yes that's right uh, the thing is that if you uh, write it like that so it is just giving a declaration but in legal sense a declaration such does not stand you should have a copyright and in copyright it's not just that the certificate will give you a copyright number also if you put that copyright number in your book it is a very strong yeah. and also i, I mean proper uh, authentication that what you have said. yes sir yes sir that is the one because just writing the symbol copyright then your name it will tell you, yes author but who uh, it may be true it may be not true does not have a legal stance if you write copyright name of the author then you put the copyright registration number that means it is a 100% original copyrighted work uh, mr devnath yes, uh, how to check the plagiarism suppose uh, somebody has plagiarized some content from my writings uh, and the book is uh, not copyrighted so uh, how it can be claimed that it is my work you have i mean plagiarized from my content uh, sir i think plagiarism you can check online there are softwares as you know it but in case of copyright it is the copyright office that maintains the copyright register if you uh, you cannot intrinsically actually check but when you find out say someone has referred to or by reading a book there someone told that he has written a book which has got similar content that yours then only you can able to find it sir but as such you cannot directly because if that book is found online then it is good to search but there are some website we can search about plagiarism yeah yeah i have a query on this compulsory licensing hi right. uh, like which is done by many countries nowadays no in case of medicine more specifically yes so like is there any bar something like that one can only do this many medicines uh, in a year or something or there is no limitation because again this compulsory license license sometimes falls in contravention with wto and many international treaties also if we yes. keep on doing it so, yeah uh compulsory license is not very much well uh, you know established technology interestingly this compulsory license it was first uh, you know the term and all the its features it was taken out by the developed countries us then uh, the europe you no know, they tried to use that compulsory license so that they thought 
that the developing countries we will use compulsory license to create their medicines there but now these developing countries just like our india it has developed so much that now it's kind of a backfired now uh, your question that uh, is there any limit or not there is actually no such uh, legal limit that is you can do a compulsory license but if you go to if you go to the section 84 of the patents act so there are three provisions if you satisfy those provisions, that is you have to first apply for a licensing if it is not granted then you can approach for a compulsory licensing so if such methods are followed properly then you can get a compulsory license of any uh, product if that is uh, you know in the ambit of the whole section but there is actually no limit but one thing is that uh, the commercial players they always uh, you know try to object uh, compulsory licensing because of the profits once you issue a compulsory license the product price will come very much low and this sometimes is so low that even the manufacturers they will suffer loss so there is always this fight is there compulsory license is also that uh, they don't want compulsory license to be true they hate compulsory license but uh, we in india since we have got a very strong uh, law system you're able to do but only one till now many were applied but they were rejected on such grounds so that is the fact sir yeah, students are encouraged to ask questions because yeah yes uh, I'm ready to answer any questions. Oh, sorry, I'm okay. Meeting on this. Thank you. Oh, uh, I think there are no questions now. So I think I'm uh, in my time slot, I guess. I'm sorry, I lost track of the time. It's to one thirty, I guess. Is there any question, students? Okay, I think we should, yeah? We should yes. close the open question session. Now I request, will Jamini, vote of thanks? Dr. Pulak uh, will uh, on a vote of thanks. Okay, uh, now I request uh, Pulak to offer formal vote of thanks. Sir, I'm uh, unmute. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, you can unmute yourself. Pull up. Okay. okay. Hmm. Good afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, sir. Uh, so far, uh, we were listening to the Impact Lecture Series organized by IIC Esbidera College in association with Ministry of Education, Innovation, Cell and AICT. This is the time uh, for appreciating everyone who made this even possible. First of all, my sincere thanks goes to our principal, sir, Dr. Dharmendranath, for his vision and support in organizing all these IIC events. Uh, without financial assistance, this kind of program uh, cannot be organized. Uh, IIC Esbidera College is grateful to MIC and EICT for uh, taking care of some part of the funding for today's event. Uh, next, uh, I would like to convey my heartful regards to both of our speaker today. 
first uh, Sarmista and Paliwal, director Third Eye Education Private Limited and founder director of Kidveda. Uh, she really highlighted uh, what is entrepreneurship, what is its importance in today's world. And uh, uh, she also highlighted what are the challenges and the opportunities that come with uh, entrepreneurship. And our second speaker today, Mr. Siddharth Devnath, scientist, uh, C, Patent Information Center, Aztec. Uh, he talked uh, about the emerging trends in intellectual property right. Uh, he also uh, elaborated uh, different IPR, like uh, geographical indication, patent, trademark, design, and various issues uh, that IPR is facing that was really, both stock was very, enriching and uh, delightful. We all have uh, gained a lot of knowledge from this to talk. I, from on behalf of IIC as Vidura College, uh, I thank both the speaker for accepting our invitation and uh, delivering such a lucid lecture. Next, uh, I convey my regard to Dr. Trubojit Dasar, convener IIC as Vidura College for taking all the initiative uh, for organizing this series of events. I, I also thank the coordinator of today's program, Dr. Uh, Sagar Sarma and Dr. Jamini Buraguhai for taking care of all the uh, background work for organizing uh, this event. It was a really good event. And uh, next, uh, I thank all the participants, which includes faculty members from our college and from outside college as well, and all the students uh, who have uh, joined today's event, our student and uh, students from other colleges as well. Without your participations, this program would not have been successful. I hope uh, you will uh, help us by participating in all the future events of IIC as Bidara College. Uh, with this, uh, uh, thanking everyone once again, I end my vote of thanks here. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to um, add one thing here. Like most of the participants, like they have filled up this feedback form as well as evaluation form. And I'm happy to share that most of them have answered the questions correctly. So that shows that they have heavily participated in this program and they understood what has been kind of uh, so nicely explained by the, both the resource person. And in fact, it fulfills one of the objectives of this kind of impact lecture series, where we encourage them to have as much as basic ideas on um, entrepreneurship as well as IPR related issues. So that's really uh, like uh, explanation was done very nicely by both the speakers. Then, sir, with your permission, uh, could we end the meeting, sir? Yes, you can close the meeting, conclude the meeting. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, thanking everyone, uh, we would like to conclude the meeting today. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone.